witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them. Great grace was upon them. Neither was there any amongst them that lacked. Neither was there any that lacked. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prizes of the things that were sold. So does it mean there were no people who came from poor backgrounds or lacking backgrounds in that church? No. But because they maximized church, neither was there any that lacked. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Great grace this year will provoke great supernatural moves of God in our midst. We will see signs. We will see wonders. We will see miracles. We will see provisions and interventions and deliverances. We are going to see healings. I'm not hearing somebody's amen. I'm not hearing somebody's amen. In that name of the Lord Jesus. Bible says, Acts chapter 14, verse 3. Long time, therefore, abode they speaking boldly, the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace and granted signs to be done by their hands. Praise the Lord. You will not only see signs in your life, you will see signs through you. That amen is weak. You are not going to only see wonders in your life, in your personal experience. God will use you to do wonders in other people's lives. I didn't hear your amen. In and around you, lack will be arrested in the name of Jesus. Now, one key for releasing great grace to arrest lack is gospeling. Getting involved with kingdom business. Getting involved with kingdom agenda and expansion. Praise the Lord. Throwing oneself into the preaching, the spreading, the announcement of the gospel, the building of the kingdom, it provokes great grace like never before. Are you still here? That place where we started reading, Bible says, and with great power gave the apostles witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them. Uh, so, great grace and great power for great witnessing was, was, uh, was uh, going hand in hand. Are you still here? Are you still here? And I want you to pay particular attention to what God is saying this morning. Because last week, Sunday, I remember I, I came thinking that that's all I will teach on grace for this month. And in the service, I even said this is the final whatever well, as we round up our teachings on grace. But as I went back as Holy Spirit of God, impartation service, he said, you have not finished the work. And then he reminded me of Bishop Son's message in one of the Wednesdays, where Bishop Son connected great grace to gospeling. I went back there and the whole thing opened again. Glory to God. The Spirit of God is talking to you this morning. There's one particular positioning that you must not miss out taking. And that positioning is positioning yourself in doing the interest of God. Seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And how many things will be added unto you? Is somebody still here? So I encourage you this year in order that great grace may flow in you, flow for you, flow through you. I encourage you that you go extra mile, be extra diligent in pursuit of kingdom assignment and agenda. Praise the Lord. Is somebody still here? So I, I said Alex should come and see me. And then that's why he's here this morning. 
I said, what will I do for this young man? And then he called to me, your, your nephew just when he is also a, an engineer who, and powerful, intelligent boy, just went to US on a $65,000, I mean, whatever, uh, uh, scholarship. Tell it to Alex, let him write it. Praise the Lord. If he's interested in a matter of year, pew, it will be out of here. Are you still here? Uh, so what steered my heart towards him like that? Kingdom assignment. Are you still here? God will send people to you this year. While doing kingdom assignment, people will remember you. I didn't hear your amen. Be like Paul. Paul went extra mile. Paul spoke a lot about great grace. But he, because he went extra mile with the kingdom of God. Remember, we have read 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed on me. God's grace will be bestowed on you this year. He said, was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Labor in what? In self-aggrandizement? No. Labor in what? In self-personal uh, projects? No. Labored, I labored more abundantly in the expansion of the gospel. That's why he, en he encountered that level of grace. Are you still here? Is somebody still here? As a matter of fact, in Acts chapter 20, verse 24, he said, but none of these things move me. Before now, he had, he, had, he had listed a whole lot of things that the devil threw at him to stop him. Perils, storms, hunger, fasting, all kinds of things. He said, but none of these things move me. Neither count my life dear to myself so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord to testify of the gospel of grace. That's why Paul's, Paul was extra mile sold out to gospel. That's why he also enjoyed extra mile grace. You are going to enjoy extra mile grace this year. I didn't hear your amen. I didn't hear your amen. Increased intensity, boisterous, flourishing commitment to building for God, building alongside God, building the kingdom, winning souls will be one major key for releasing great grace this year. Somebody still here. So we read from Zechariah chapter 4. Who are you, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? You shall become what? A plain. His hands have laid the foundation. His hand was finish, will finish it. What was Zerubbabel building? Personal mansion? Oh, you don't know what Zerubbabel was building? He was building the temple of God. Are you still here? He was building a temple for God. So he, he said he will bring forth the earth stone. Earth stone means completion stone, the final stone. He will bring forth the earth stone. That's the finishing stone. He will reach the finishing point, shouting grace, grace to it. What was he building? He was building God's temple. He wasn't building personal mansion. Are you still here? Are we saying this year you will not build your personal things? No. As you are building God's personal things and building your personal, God's things and building your personal things, the things of God that you are building will join you to build your personal things. I didn't hear somebody say amen. We use the example of David that he enjoyed grace, grace. Is that correct? What did David go into that war because of his girlfriend? Did Goliath assault any member of his family? Look at the, the things. First Samuel chapter 17, verse 26. And David spoke to the man that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that kills this Philistine and takes away this reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine? First Samuel 17, 26. Okay? That he should defy the armies of the living God. David was on an Olukoya assignment that morning. Ah! 17 years old boy. I said, I can't stand there and watch this man insulting God. Goliath didn't steal his father's sheep. 
He said, I kept my father's sheep, personal whatever. Lion came, I pursued it. Uh, bear came, I killed it. But Goliath didn't take anything from David. Goliath was just abusing God, saying, ah, you are going to die today. Be ferocious about kingdom business and you will enjoy ferocious grace. Is somebody still here? Look at it again. Verse 45 of the same chapter, first Samuel 17. Then said David to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword and with great and with a spear and with a shield. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. You won't take your head home today for cursing God. You are finished. Are you still here? I caught somebody laughing at me. These mushy things are still inside me. I guess it will remain there. <laughs> Let me tell you, you are laughing at me. You are exactly like that. <laughs> okay, she's worse. Moses enjoyed great grace. Was it for family expansion? No. No. Exodus 33, 16. For wherein shall it be known here that I and your people have found grace in your sight? Is it not in that, in, in that you go with us? So shall we be separated. Exodus 33, verse 16. I and your people from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. How will they know that we have found grace? Is it not by going with us? And then this, your going with us, your presence with us, and your grace on us will separate us. This year you will be separated. Listen to me, get ready for distinction. Ah, that amen is weak. In your village like this, get ready for distinction. In your career, get ready for distinction. The grace of God will stand you out. The grace of God will place you on a pedestal. I didn't hear your amen. Was Moses building personal kingdom? No. Even the owner of the people wanted to destroy the people at some time. Hey, sir, you can't. Hey, Ronu Jilena, why can't why should you be saying you kill them? He said, if you kill them, all the other nations will say that you couldn't save them to the uttermost. That's why you destroy them. And God said, it's true. <laughs> God wanted to make mistake. Are you still here? He was diehard committed to kingdom projects. He enjoyed great grace. Is somebody still here? Glory to God. So many ways you can get involved with gospeling and kingdom expansion this year. By groaning, praying at least, choosing time. Maybe you say one hour. Maybe you don't have money. You don't have, but you have time. One hour or two hours daily. Praying for the outreaches in the Airstone Church. Praying for new converts. Praying for the projects. Praying for the cells. Praying for, for, for Change Academy. Praying for the Diaspora Church. Praise the Lord. I said, praise God. Four ways by which you can get involved with kingdom expansion. Number one, groaning. Investing time in praying. So what happened in Acts chapter 4 when great grace was upon them? It was a product. It happened after they had prayed. Verse 31, and when they had prayed. Somebody say when they had prayed. The place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with boldness. This is what led to verse 32, verse 33, and 34, where the Bible says, and great grace was upon them. Are you still here? So praying, but not using all the time to pray only for your stuff. I'm telling you, I don't remember to pray for things that concern me. I don't. Glory to God. Number two, by going. One key that may unleash uh, 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 um, great, unbelievable grace in somebody's life this year 
Maybe you have time. Every Saturday morning, you are not doing it. I will come now. Is it not to go out and give and say, come to church? And then you start doing that, and then bam! Praise the Lord. Getting involved with evangelism, personal and group related evangelism and outreach is get involved in the outreach groups. These things are, are things that provoke grace. Is somebody still here? Active commitment to involvement with soul winning. Verse 33, and with great power, the apostles gave, uh, the apostles gave, and with great power, gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them. With great power, with great energy, and great grace was upon them. This year, one, one uh, uh, target to set is, I will make sure I follow up and I help at least maybe like 10 people to be consistent in the things of God and in the house of God this year, you will see great grace begin to flow. Am I communicating? No outreach that will happen this year that I will not be at, great grace begins to flow. Is somebody still here? Bible says, long time, Acts 4, 13. A body speaking boldly, long time. How many time? Long time. How much time? Long time, not a few time. They invested time which gave testimony to the word of his grace and granted that signs. You will see signs this year. In the name of Jesus, next G, giving. First G is what? Second G is what? Third G, giving. Giving. Acts 4, 34. Neither was there anyone that lacked for as many as were possessors of lands or houses, sold them, brought pieces of the things sold to them, and laid them down at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made unto every man according to his need. Is somebody still here? Where I am now, where I operate, I could pay a million naira, and I'm not joking, uh, per term for Victor School. I can't pay it. It's within my capacity to be able to do so. But I will not. I want your part of my law school, sir. <laughs> Am I communicating? And many must go to school. <laughs> Why should I carry the one million and be giving only one? So, eh, many, many people, many people. Praise God. Are you still here? Are you still here? Just in the course of last week, somebody came. I'm returning to school. This is okay. Another person, uh, one, uh, one of us here, yeah, who just went to you, he wrote me, this is what I paid. Yeah, this is what, I, okay, I'm going to do it. Am I communicating? Are you still here or you have gone home? If it is only by you and because of you, it hinders the flow of grace. Right? I think that you do it, you should do mm, at that. Oh, yeah, do it now. It's belated. Do it. Mm. Write it down. Don't let it be only because of you. Faith, you understand that. Glory to God. Next G, gathering. Helping us pastor the people. Helping us follow up on the people. Sell. So that's why you should get involved with the cell. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. That's why you should not just attend, really be involved. Let the smaller family and then help um, um, keep oversight over the people of God there. Tell yourself this year, no person who comes to church from our area that uh, uh, will, will I not visit. I'll make sure I visit them. I'll do my best in helping them to stay in the kingdom of God. Is somebody still here? Is somebody still here? Glory to Jesus. Don't let, don't do visitations, follow up, and you know, checking up on other Christians just because you are asked to be self-initiative about it. Am I communicating? You are there, you don't carry pastor on your head, but you are a pastor, sir. Is somebody still here? Look out for other children of God around you. Praise God. I said praise God. Glory to Jesus. Uh, so what will happen? 
is as you position yourselves in the things of God this year, you will see great grace flowing. Can I get that oil? And he said it is a, it is a, 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 one of the things that great grace will target this year is great provisions. Somebody say great provisions. Luke 22 verse 35. Jesus said to them, put that one up. Luke 22, 35. Luke 22, verse 35. Let's read it together. Can we read it one to go? When I sent you out without and script and shoes, lacked ye anything? And they said what? You remember when he sent them out? This is Jesus. You remember when he sent them out? What did he send them out to do? For personal business? No. You, remember, you don't remember when he sent them out two by two? He said, enter villages, enter families, enter places, and preach the gospel. Tell them the kingdom of God is at hand. Heal the sick, pray for the sick. So this was some time later. I was like, hey, because he was trying to teach them something. The time I sent you out without pause, don't carry your wallet. I wanted to see what that NLT said. Without sandals, without, did you lack anything? Okay, Jesus, when I sent you out to preach the good news and you did not have money, a traveler's bag or extra clothing, did you need anything? They said, no. Come on! <laughs> Nothing, sir. Don't take a truck load. Don't take bad. Don't take anything. Just go. And we should just go. What about transfer money? Just go. Peter must have said, hey, sir, are you sure that you, we, we shouldn't take anything from the person? Mm -hmm. Bible said they said nothing. This year, you are lacking nothing. Yeah. That amen is weak, oh. I said, this year you are lacking nothing. In the name of Jesus, this year you lack nothing. You lack nothing. Nothing will be lacking to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Acts 4, 34, neither was there anyone amongst them that lacked. That is our testimony. I said, that's our testimony. That's our testimony. So the children of Israel enjoy great grace. Look at their testimony during the wilderness. They lacked nothing. Children of Israel lacked nothing. Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 7. I showed you earlier that great grace was amongst them as they journeyed. For 40 years, not for 40 days. For the Lord your God has blessed you in all your way, all the works of your hands. He knows your walking. He knows your walking through this great wilderness. For these 40 years, your God has been with you. You have lacked nothing. When great grace is operational, lack is not permitted to surface. Lack will not have a voice in your life this year. I'm not hearing somebody's amen. I'm not hearing somebody's amen. Stand up to your face. Cre create a product in your practice. No, no not, not you. Create a product in your practice. And dedicate it, maybe some kind of pro bono, uh, uh, pro bono something, and dedicate it somehow to, to, to glorify God. I don't know how you're going to do it. God will speak to you more about it. Are you still here? I have seen it in my life, 17 years doing this. Initially, I was complaining. I was helping people. People would share fantabulous testimonies. Jesus! But there was need. And then all of a sudden, he gave me this idea, and then, bam! Glory to God. While I'm still thinking about it, it's already provided. That will be your testimony. That will be your testimony. You can write down the Amen chapter 9, verse 22 also. They lack nothing. Yeah, for 40 years did you sustain them in the wilderness. Then Nehemiah 9, 21, for 40 years did you sustain them in the wilderness. Where is a wilderness? A, a, a wild place. Praise the Lord. Where things are, wilderness, things are not, it's not comfortable, hard, desert. Looks like I'm describing one place in, in west of Africa. I'm drawing the map. Yeah. 
If you don't understand it, I will not call it because I don't want to confess negative. You sustain them in the wilderness. They lacked what? <laughs> I like this. Their clothes did not tear. And their feet did not see. By what operation? Operation of grace. You know in Exodus chapter, chapter uh, uh, Exodus 33, that's just before, as they were starting the journey, this was must be a few weeks into uh, uh, crossing over uh, uh, the Red Sea. Jesus, uh, Paul said, uh, um, uh, um, Moses said, we need grace. So God said, I will give it to you. The thing sustained them 40 years. So, uh, listen, what you will encounter this year will last you a lifetime. Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah, so it will last your next generation. I'm not hearing your amen. I'm not hearing your amen. amen. Get ready to be distinguished. Amen. He said, where which shall, you, shall we be separated from other nations? You will be separated this year. Amen. In the name of Jesus, you will enjoy sanctification. Amen. Get ready to be in a class of your own. Get ready for blue ocean experience. Amen. Eat oro and ibom soup. Get ready for blue ocean experience. Blue ocean experience. Blue ocean experience. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. I saw that it was grace that distinguished Gideon. Grace literally went to Gideon where he was hiding and fetched him out. Grace will fetch you out this year. I didn't hear your amen. Judges chapter 6 verse 17. And he said unto him, If now I found grace, this is Gideon talking to that angel in your sight. Then show me a sign that you are the one talking to me. So it was grace. It was grace that he was hiding. This year you stop hiding. You are coming into limelight. I am not hearing somebody's amen. I am not hearing somebody's amen. Ruth was poorer than church rats. Ruth. When she returned with Naomi to wherever they returned to, was poor. Because in those days, if you were a widow, you were done for. Only men had lands in those days. And their only sustenance was farming. So if you were a widow, you didn't have land. You depended on, on uh, close relatives. So literally herself and Naomi were begging. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Ruth chapter 2 verse 10, then she fell. This is when Boaz had begun to, to really show her favor. She fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said unto him, Why have I found grace in your sight that you should take knowledge of me seeing? I'm a stranger. Oh, glory to God. This year you go from hiding to limelight. To being celebrated. Even if you are new in the industry, grace will locate you. In that grace located her. Grace stood her out. Grace will stood you out, stand you out. Grace favored her so much. Grace will favor you so much. Grace took her from nothing to something. You are going from nothing to something. Grace took her from so nobody to somebody. You are going from nobody to somebody. Grace took root and planted her in Jesus' genealogy. Hey! Like I said earlier, what will happen this year, if Jesus tarries and you live to 96, 97, 98 and you go, what will happen this year, the people who are behind you will still be enjoying it. Yeah. Okay, you didn't get it before. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. What happened in Ruth's life, even Jesus enjoyed from it. Are you still here? Are you still here? Get ready. You, it will be like you have never been doing business before. Because our business will happen for you this year, my Tony. It will be like you just started work this year. Because our career will answer to you this year. It will be so different. It will be like you just practicing, you started practicing legal practice this year. Because uh, 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 you'll be winning cases. And you'll be winning cases. And you'll be winning cases. You too, they will think you are using something. You too, from this year, you are not going empty handed. You are joining the company of people who are not going empty-handed. Even though the one you are going with is the correct one. 
I didn't hear your amen. I didn't hear your amen. If you are still in this house, stand to your feet. Grace will. To the end.